I'm Dr. Bono Fornage uh, with the uh, University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. And I'm going to uh, talk about the local and regional staging of breast cancer with ultrasound. Uh, this uh, presentation is about uh, the use of ultrasound to um, achieve the local and regional staging of patients with breast cancer. The uh, staging of breast cancer includes the local staging as well as the regional staging. Let's start with the local staging of a newly diagnosed breast cancer. The first thing to uh, check is the size of the tumor, which is going to determine the T of the TNM classification. And um, of course, it's important to uh, determine if the tumor is less than two centimeters in longest diameter, in which case it's going to be a T1 tumor, or larger than that, in which case it will be a T2 up to 5 centimeters, or a T3 uh, even larger than 5 centimeters. In uh, most cases, and assuming that the margins are well seen and the tumor is well demarcated from the surrounding tissues, it's going to be relatively easy to measure the tumor. This is an example of a well-defined, uh, although irregular, tumor that is easily measured, which measures 1.1 cm in longest diameter. That's another one which is even smaller, but still very easy to measure. And even this one, which is still in the range of 1 centimeter in diameter, is very uh, easy to uh, measure. Now, when we deal with this type of uh, tumor, which is poorly defined, uh, then the measurements are uh, more difficult to obtain. And in that case, it's going to be difficult to tell if the mass is uh, less than 2 cm or greater than 2 cm in size. This is another example of a mass which is uh, very difficult to measure. Uh, not to mention that one, uh, which uh, we can barely uh, delineate. One type of cancer which is uh, uh, famous for being ill-defined is the invasive lobular cancer. These are two examples of invasive lobular carcinomas. And uh, these tumors appear typically as areas of uh, shadowing due to their high content of fibrosis and, and limited uh, cellularity. So in those uh, tumor cases, um, most of the time, uh, the, the, the best local staging will be achieved with MRI. So that's for the uh, tumor size. The the second uh, important uh, point to uh, address when we talk about the local staging of a tumor is, is it one tumor or is there more than one? In other words, we have to rule out multifocality or multicentricity. And that's uh, actually the uh, detection and diagnosis of any additional uh, focus of cancer in the breast. Now, the difference between multifocal and multicentric, well, is the following. Uh, a multifocal cancer uh, involves multiple foci in the same quadrant and within a distance of 3 to 5 centimeters, depending on uh, which uh, school uh, we uh, listen to uh, a multicentric tumor is a tumor which uh, involves multiple foci uh, in different quadrants. And uh, the bottom line is that a multicentric tumor uh, 
uh, will not be amenable to breast conservation, to a segmentectomy. So this is an example of a bifocal uh, breast cancer. There is a, a known tumor uh, marked with a T, but there was a sonography detected uh, a second uh, nodule, which is marked with an N, um, at a distance of less than 3 cm. So this is still uh, treatable with uh, uh, breast conservation. Another example of a bifocal breast cancer with two lesions. Now in this case, uh, we have two lesions which are uh, separated by a distance of more than uh, seven centimeters. And more importantly, on this uh, extended uh, field of view uh, sonogram, which was taken transversely from the 11 o'clock to the two o'clock position, uh, obviously these uh, two uh, lesions are located in two different quadrants. So uh, in that case, uh, there is no way that uh, breast conservation can be achieved. This is another example of a multicentric breast cancer. Uh, although initially the tumor was relatively uh, limited to this 11 o'clock position, however, uh, while performing the whole breast examination, uh, the technologist uh, detected this uh, minute uh, lesion under the uh, nipple. And uh, even though I was uh, about to um, uh, disregard this questionable lesion, uh, I turned the power doppler on and obviously uh, there was significant hypervascularity in this four millimeter uh, lesion, which prompted an ultrasound guided uh, fine needle aspiration, which con con confirmed uh, the, um, another focus of malignancy. So, this lesion under the nipple uh, qualified for multicentricity and the uh, breast conservation that was uh, contemplated uh, had to be canceled. As far as the detection of additional foci of uh, cancer, there is no question that MRI is better than ultrasound, and I mean is more sensitive than uh, ultrasound. However, we also know that uh, there is some uh, uh, limited specificity and that the second look ultrasound is uh, often needed uh, to um, perform a biopsy uh, to verify those lesions or additional foci uh, detected by MRI. Um, to uh, summarize about the uh, local uh, staging, uh, we can compare with MRI, which is uh, used in many institutions for that purpose. But it's not clear which uh, patients uh, should really have a preoperative staging uh, MRI examination, other than those with an invasive lobular cancer. And the cost effectiveness of preoperative staging MRI is still unknown. And uh, uh, we should not forget the fact that only a limited number of patients with a newly diagnosed breast cancer will have access to MRI, whereas ultrasound is widely available. Whereas ultrasound is more widely available. Let's move on to the regional staging. The original staging involves the uh, evaluation of the lymphatic spread of breast cancer. That's the N of the TNM classification. And uh, it's the uh, detection and diagnosis of any metastatic lymph node in the nodal basins that drain uh, the breast. The nodal basins that drain uh, breast cancer include the uh, axillary nodes, the infraclavicular nodes, the supraclavicular nodes, and also the internal memory nodes, which represent the 
second uh, most important drainage pathway uh, for breast cancer. Now, we should not forget about the fact that there is also the possibility of cross metastasis to the other side. The importance of such cross metastasis is that any metastasis to a contralateral uh, nodal basin is going to be considered as a distant metastasis. In other words, a patient with a cross metastasis uh, will be stage four. So even though we, uh, we have seen that MRI is better than ultrasound for the uh, extent of uh, disease in the breast, there is no question that ultrasound in experienced hands is better than MRI for the evaluation of the lymphatic spread because you can evaluate rapidly more nodal basins than MRI can, and more importantly, it's possible within minutes to confirm metastatic disease with an ultrasound-guided fine needle respiration of an asuspicious node. The technique of examination of the axilla is fairly simple, and uh, it's done with the arm elevated. The examination of the infraclavicular region uh, requires that the uh, arm be uh, uh, brought down. And uh, the examination of the uh, internal uh, mammary nodes is done by scanning along the edge of the sternum uh, longitudinally and also transversely along each intercostal space. Let's uh, review the normal uh, ultrasound anatomy of uh, lymph nodes. Let's begin with the axillary nodes. The axillary nodes uh, are usually uh, replaced with fat, and they have this typical appearance of uh, fat surrounding by fat with a very thin uh, lining of residual cortex, as uh, pointed with the arrows. So this, is, this complete fat replacement is very typical of a benign node. Um, this is uh, another uh, couple of examples with, of typically benign lymph nodes with a very, very thin hypoechoic cortex, residual cortex, and most of the node being replaced with fat, which has uh, the same echogenicity uh, as the surrounding fat. Now, on occasions, the central fat will show some decreased echogenicity uh, so that the appearance is uh, similar to a target and uh, with a hypoechoic peripheral uh, rim, a more echogenic rim, and a central hypoechoic component. Again, this is typical of a benign lymph node. It's important when evaluating the axilla to be able to tell if the lymph nodes are located at the level one, two, or three of the axilla, because the implications for the staging are uh, quite different if the metastasis is in uh, the level one or two or level three. The uh, level two nodes are those that are located posterior to the pectoralis minor. So the goal is to identify the pectoralis minor, which is easier to do on a transverse scan of the uh, axilla, and the margins of the pectoralis minor are the limits of the uh, level two area. This is a transverse scan of the axilla showing the pectoralis major overlying the pectoralis minor uh, anterior to the uh, subclavian vein. Uh, 
as a rule, Fed-containing nodes are not uh, demonstrated in the other uh, nodal basins, which uh, makes the situation relatively easy. I mean, any abnormal node, especially hypoechoic, should be viewed as suspicious for metastatic disease. So those uh, fat-containing nodes are rarely visualized in the infraclavicular and supraclavicular regions. They are even rarer in the internal memory uh, nodal basin. So this is an, an example of the uh, normal anatomy of the internal uh, memory chains. When you scan longitudinally along the uh, edge of the sternum, you will see the uh, cross-sections of the costal cartilages, which are hypoechoic and which do not cast a strong shadow so that you can still see the pleural line uh, underneath them. And the only uh, thing that we can really appreciate in the uh, intercostal space are the internal memory vessels, which we now call the internal thoracic vessels. So this is a longitudinal scan of an intercostal space uh, showing the uh, internal thoracic artery. Now, on transverse scans, uh, both vessels will be visualized. They can be seen on a gray scale with their characteristic pulsations. Here we see the internal uh, thoracic artery and the vein, which appears larger than the artery. And, of course, we can... Uh, launch the color Doppler and have the uh, visualization of those uh, vessels on color Doppler. But there is really nothing else around those vessels but some fat between the lung and the pectoralis major. So what is the uh, ultrasound appearance or the appearances of nodal metastasis? Well, first, we need to have a disclaimer. Sonography, like any other morphological imaging technique, cannot detect metastasis smaller than 4 or 5 millimeters in diameter. Another point is that uh, if we remember the physiology of uh, the lymphatic drainage in the nodes, the lymph arrives through the afferent lymphatics at the periphery of the node and exits uh, through the hilum. So if we are uh, looking for a site where the early metastatic deposit is going to uh, be detected, it should be the periphery of the lymph node. So the the early lymph node metastasis will develop at the periphery of the node, and as the uh, tumor grows, uh, the entire lymph node eventually will be replaced with tumor. What are the sonographic criteria for uh, nodal metastasis? Well, a number of indices have been tried and obviously uh, do not work well, and those measurements uh, are not uh, used, at least in our practice. But the two criteria which are most important for me are, one, the deformity of the node, which can be a focal bulge at the beginning, or a global deformity of the shape of the node, but that would be a later uh, stage. And also very important, the progressive replacement of the fat by uh, markedly hypoechoic uh, material. The tumor is uh, markedly hypoechoic in, in the node. And this is easy to detect, of course, if the deposit is large enough and it's even 
easier to detect if the node was initially echogenic. This is uh, another example of a focal uh, deposit, uh, relatively small. This is probably in the range of uh, uh, 1 cm by uh, 3 or 4 mm in thickness, which is markedly hypoechoic in an otherwise echogenic lymph node. Now, as the metastasis grows, it's going to occupy a larger and larger volume. These are another two examples, with one here, uh, which uh, has replaced half of the node. This is another example of an otherwise totally echogenic node, except for this uh, metastasis. And these are examples of uh, small lymph nodes which are totally replaced by tumor. So please note how uh, hypoechoic the tumor deposits are. Microcalcifications in a lymph node are uh, virtually pathognomonic for metastatic disease, especially if the primary tumor uh, contains such microcalcifications. So this is an example of a myriad of microcalcifications in a metastatic node in the axilla. So let's move on to the uh, infraclavicular nodes, which are the level 3 axillary nodes. These nodes have an adverse prognostic significance since uh, their presence uh, means uh, that the patient is stage 3C. This is an example of a scan of the infraclavicular region. It's a longitudinal scan. We can see the uh, shadow from the clavicle, and there is this lymph node which is located right anterior to the subclavian vein. The, the internal memory nodes appear as hypoechoic masses that are located adjacent to the internal thoracic vessels, and they will appear as oval masses on longitudinal scans and rounded uh, masses on transverse scans. You remember that the normal uh, lymph nodes are too small to be seen, in that uh, nodal basin, and that basically any hypoechoic mass in that region uh, is a metastasis until proven otherwise. So this is a scan of a normal uh, internal memory uh, chain showing nothing but the cartilages and the internal thoracic vessels. But this is a longitudinal scan of an intercostal space showing a hypoechoic mass, which has uh, really nothing to do here, and which is, again, a lymph node metastasis. The internal mammary uh, metastasis are frequently found lateral to the vessels, but they can be found uh, between the vessels and even medial to the internal thoracic vessels. This is an example of a transverse scan of uh, uh, right uh, intercostal space showing a relatively large internal memory uh, metastasis lateral to the internal thoracic vein and artery. This is the edge of the sternum. Another example on the right side showing a smaller lymph node metastasis adjacent lateral to the internal thoracic vessels, vein, and artery. And this is a, an example of a tiny lymph node metastasis which is located actually between the internal thoracic artery and vein. This is another transverse scan of an intercostal space with the edge of the sternum. This is on the left side, showing this internal memory lymph node metastasis located medial to the internal thoracic vein and artery.
Power Doppler uh, ultrasound can demonstrate the hypervascularity of uh, internal memory nodal metastasis, uh, like in this case, the longitudinal scan, although the smaller the node and the more uh, difficult to appreciate the hypervascularity. And finally, uh, let's uh, mention the supraclavicular and even the low jugular nodes, which can be involved uh, with uh, metastatic breast cancer. So uh, the examination of the supraclavicular fossa is fairly easy, and if we uh, see uh, any of those hypoechoic uh, masses uh, in a patient, uh, especially if they are already axillary nodes, uh, then uh, these should be considered as lymph node metastasis, and if needed, might be verified just to refine the staging of the disease. And this is the uh, transverse scan. This is the longitudinal scan showing one such metastatic node just above the clavicle. Uh, the lymphatic uh, spread can extend even higher up in the uh, low jugular territory. This is an example of metastatic nodes uh, in the low jugular territory. Some pitfalls, well, lymph nodes can uh, enlarge and be hypoechoic in case of benign reactive hyperplasia. Most of the time, they will still retain a central echogenic uh, hilum. This is a case of a fairly uh, large and suspicious node, except that the patient has uh, lupus, and uh, it's uh, not uh, infrequent uh, to see enlarged nodes in the axilla in patients with uh, lupus. This is another case of a patient who has uh, abnormal nodes in the right axilla. The technologist uh, drew uh, the attention of the radiologist on that, and uh, she looked at the contralateral axilla, which is the thing to do when there is an abnormal finding in uh, one nodal basin. And similar nodes were found in the left axilla. Uh, the explanation in this case was that the patient was nursing, and uh, this is another uh, well-known source of pitfall. Patients uh, who are nursing have usually enlarged nodes in both axillae. Uh, the message here is that, at the least doubt, uh, it's good practice to examine the contralateral nodal basin. Let's move on to... Uh, ultrasound-guided FNA, because that's the uh, most uh, efficacious and also the most elegant way of confirming uh, lymph node metastasis in a patient with breast cancer. The instrumentation is very easy. All we need is a 20cc syringe, a 20 gauge or 21 gauge uh, fine needle, some alcohol, and a few gauzes. The technique of needle insertion is the same for um, all nodes, and this is the technique that has been used for ultrasound-gate FNA of uh, virtually uh, all masses in the body, and this is something uh, that has not changed uh, in the past three uh, decades. This is an example of an ultrasound-gate FNA of an early uh, nodal metastasis, uh, in an otherwise completely uh, echogenic lymph node, but at one pole of the node there is this uh, hypoechoic deposit, which is six or seven millimeters in, in size, and that was extensively sampled in, in real time, and one pass was sufficient to uh, yield uh, very abundant uh, material for cytopathologic examination. This is another example of uh, an early focal deposit at the periphery of an otherwise echogenic lymph node. Again, the sampling is extremely accurate and takes uh, 
uh, no more than 20 or 30 seconds and one single pass with a 20 gauge needle is usually enough to obtain a sufficient material to confirm the metastatic nature of this deposit. The ultrasound guided FNA of internal memory uh, lymph nodes can be uh, a little bit uh, trickier because space is very limited and there are some structures uh, that we don't want to uh, hit inadvertently, such as the internal thoracic vessels and, of course, uh, the lung. This is a diagram showing the technique of uh, ultrasound guided FNA of an internal memory lymph node metastasis. Of course, this is done uh, on a transverse scan since the approach is going to be from lateral to medial. So this is uh, how it goes. The needle goes through the uh, pectoralis muscle, which has been numbed before, and the tip of the needle, actually the bevel of the needle, can be seen very clearly in this small uh, six millimeter lymph node, which is located lateral to the internal thoracic artery and vein, which we can see pulsating right on top of the pleura. And again, in this case, uh, sufficient uh, material was obtained and the diagnosis of metastatic disease was confirmed within 10 minutes. So, uh, the diagnosis of lymph node metastasis is often obtained with a single pass within 10 minutes, and for that reason, uh, the procedure is extremely well tolerated by the patient. Uh, no local anesthesia is needed for the axilla or the supraclavicular uh, region. Uh, of course, whenever the, uh, we need to go through uh, muscle, and that's uh, the case for infraclavicular lymph nodes or internal memory nodes, then local anesthesia is needed. The complications of ultrasound guided FNA of lymph nodes are uh, the same as uh, the uh, generic complications of NA ultrasound guided FNA, that's pain, bleeding, infection. In the case of internal memory nodes, uh, of course, we should add the risk of pneumothorax to the list. Among the advantages of finely respiration is the fact that uh, it is definitely less uh, traumatic than a core biopsy, and the risk of uh, developing a hematoma is uh, far less than with core biopsy. This is an example of a huge hematoma uh, that uh, developed after a core biopsy of a lymph node performed at an outside uh, facility. Uh, and we had to uh, drain a large amount of blood uh, because of the excruciating pain uh, suffered by the patient. Let's look at the impact on patient staging of the ultrasound examination of the nodal basins and the diagnosis of lymph node metastasis with ultrasound guided FNAs. Well, when we uh, find a lymph node metastasis in the axilla and we prove it with an ultrasound guided FNA, the stage of the patient is at least stage two. The other benefit of proving a lymph node metastasis in the axilla in a patient with a newly diagnosed breast cancer is that it eliminates the need for a sentinel node biopsy. Finding a lymph node metastasis in the internal memory chains means that the patient is at least stage three. 
A. If we find a combination of internal memory metastasis and axillary lymph node metastasis, the patient is stage 3C. In the same manner, if we find an infraclavicular lymph node or a supraclavicular lymph node, the patient is automatically stage 3C, regardless of the size of the primary tumor. So again, to summarize, if we find a lymph node metastasis in the axilla, the patient is at least stage 2. If we find a lymph node in the internal memory uh, chains, in the infraclavicular region or supraclavicular region, the patient is at least stage 3. So these are the important uh, consequences of finding those lymph node metastases in a patient with breast cancer. This is a, a typical example. Uh, this patient has a triple negative uh, breast cancer, but it's uh, T1, even though it's a multicentric uh, cancer. The axilla is negative. So before the ultrasound is, the stage is T1 and 0, that is stage 1A. After the ultrasound of the lymph node uh, basins and the discovery of this internal memory lymph node metastasis on this longitudinal scan, and uh, here is the transverse scan confirming uh, the lymph node metastasis, now the patient is stage 3A. So that's a typical example of how ultrasound of the nodal basins can impact on the patient's staging. When we uh, do this regional staging with ultrasound, we have to do biopsies to uh, confirm the uh, abnormal uh, findings. Now, the primary tumor needs a core biopsy. There's no question about that. But a natural guide FNA is all we need to confirm any additional lesion in the rest of the breast to prove multifocal or multicentric disease. And FNA is also uh, sufficient uh, to confirm a suspicious node uh, starting with the one that would impact the most on staging if it, uh, if it is positive. So in summary, it is strongly recommended to include the regional nodal basins in the ultrasound examination of the breast in uh, breast cancer patients. And ultrasound with ultrasound guided FNA, the most cost-effective technique for evaluating the lymphatic spread of a newly diagnosed breast cancer. But wait, uh, there is more. Uh, when we uh, start looking away from the breast, uh, we should be prepared for some interesting findings and uh, a few uh, possible incidentalomas. So this is a, a couple of these are a few examples of uh, some uh, not so distant uh, metastases. This is an example of a metastasis uh, to the insertion of the pectoralis major to the sternum. This is an example of uh, 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 metastasis to the sternum. In fact, uh, we were surprised to see that we could see through the sternum on this longitudinal scan because the sternum was totally uh, replaced with uh, metastasis. This is an example of a lung metastasis uh, and this is an example of a metastasis to the thyroid from uh, breast cancer. Thank you very much for your attention.